Hi guys, I'm Dan Larson. Let me introduce you myself first. I've been working as a sound designer for sample labels and companies like Loopmasters, Vesper, Cymatics, CR2 and others for like six, seven years. And I also work under the name of Wuxem as a dubstep artist. I also own a YouTube channel, which is called Let's Synthesize, where I share a new video every week about audio productions. In this tutorial series, I would like to cover interesting ideas and things about Isotope Trash 2, which is an awesome plugin. I've been using it for like a year and I pretty love it. The user interface is so easy to understand and the distortion types and everything it offers is just simply outstanding. So, so without further ado, let's hop into it and let's try to understand the main UI of Trash 2. Uh, but first, for that, let me just drop in the plugin itself, Trash 2. So here you are, Trash 2. So when you load up first, you can see that the preset browser window pops up. Let's talk about it a little later. Okay, so this is the main window of Trash 2. And this frame here, what you can see, is where you can control the modules. So you can see six modules here. We have a filter, a trash, which is the distortion core itself, another filter instance, a convolve module, a dynamics module, and a delay module. We have a knob for browsing the presets and manage them basically, a bypass where you can bypass everything what you did in Trash 2 to compare your dry signal and your wet signal. Of course, you can have of course, you have this wet dry slider and an input and output slider with a limiter knob. And this is the main frame of Trash 2. When you click on something, click on one of the modules, it loads up so you can see the loaded module here in this window. So for example, I clicked on filter so you can see the filter module here, the trash module, filter 2 module, convolve, etc, etc. It has a gray tone until you activate the module with this little button here. So now I activated it, it turns into live. So it is very easy to follow what you're doing. Of course, we need to talk a little more about the presets. So when you click on the presets button, the preset browser window pops up. And here you have several folders of presets, which can be trashed too. And you can just, you know, go through them. I don't want to demonstrate, you can do it on your own. These are pretty great presets. But there is one thing to mention that you need to click on this default here if you want to initialize your preset. So let's say you have your own preset. For example, like let's make a trash um, new wave shaper form or a new wave shaper line or something. And you want to save that. It's pretty easy. Go to presets and click on add it will give you a new pre new blank name. For example, let's call it then first. Click enter and then you can, you know, just grab it and put it everywhere you want. Oh, I don't know where I put it now. Okay, here is then first. All right, very cool. So you just created a new preset. And now if you want to delete it, of course, you just click on delete. It's pretty obvious. If you want to update your preset, that means that, uh, for example, you load up a preset, let's say this digital dump harder, and you just, you know, tweak it a little, adding more points, etc. And you want to save this modified preset to the original one. You don't need to create a new one and delete the previous one, what you just created and just modified. You need to only click on the update button and it will update it. So next time when you load it up, it will load the updated one. So now I need to go back and clear everything, like clear all and try to get back to a stage where the original preset was, but never mind. Uh, this will be good for demonstration purposes. So this was the update. If you want to update an already existed preset, we have a compare button here. And what it does when you make your own preset, for example, you tweak one and you click on the previous one, loads up and you click on compare it loads up the previously edited preset so not the previous preset what you just browsed but it will compare the last preset you loaded up and the last thing you worked on so it is pretty awesome to compare your work with other presets so just you know go through some of them click on compare 
and if you load up the previous one what you worked on it's very awesome of course you can create new folders like then presets not all presets just click on and you can drag them anywhere you want like to the root or something here we have an empty folder of then preset and of course you can delete that very easy to, to do and of course there is an op here if you are annoyed by trash 2 and it always pops up this preset folder when you load up your plugin so let's try it again load up trash 2 and this time it won't pop up yeah no presets folder popped up and um, change folder you can change the presets folder anywhere you want basically and there is another function here to dock the presets folder into the main working area of trash 2 very handy feature okay so these were the main things what you need to know about the presets and the presets browser and there is one more thing to talk about when you look on these module buttons you may ask yourself okay this is pretty awesome but how can i change the orders of these modules you can do that click on graph and here we have this beautiful line demonstrating the order of these modules so you can grab one of them for example the filter and just put it under the dynamics or because we have two instances of filters we can use them on parallel mode just grab one of them onto each other okay there is it so now we have two filters in parallel mode and the distortion module comes first after we filter it and we use a convolve fx on it and a dynamics delay and all we can see on the spectrum is the end of the chain so the all affected sound is what spectrum shows us so this graph window gives us great flexibility so this was the overview of the main ui the user interface and it's in the next videos i would like to show you a little more about the options the history and the limiter and drive at functions so see you in the next video guys thanks everybody for watching commenting and indeed liking we really do appreciate all the support we get here on our sonic academy youtube channel so if you find this video super useful please We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.